Uh, I'm Clemens Rapp, um, Head of Solutions Engineering at LegalFly. So we got founded by four Tinder engineers and uh, they went from probably the sexiest industry to the least sexy industry, compliance. Uh, we got 17 million in funding from uh, global investors and we have 32 employees right now and two offices in London and are based in Ghent. Our goal is to automate repetitive, low value processes and help your legal professionals to focus on high value tasks. Um, we have already processed hundreds of thousands of documents to um, review contracts, flag risk, or um, find a needle in the haystack. Um, at the core of everything we do is our proprietary technology to make sure that we extract all the personal information or your data and your client's data and make sure that it never leaves your own infrastructure. Before we apply any generative AI, all the data that you care about and your clients is not in it anymore to make sure that you comply with all regulations. Legal like efficiency gains can be probably found in every legal process you have in your company. Um, and for example, at KBC, we have automated more than 140 use cases. But don't you worry, uh, I'm just going to use one example today, and that's going to be DORA. DORA, and according to the uh, CSSF in Luxembourg, uh, has caused some friction, as probably uh, some know. And uh, one of the two biggest issues were resource shortages and third-party contractual negotiations. So hands up who has faced similar issues in uh, their company. That's less than I was hoping for, but I'm pretty sure you just don't want to admit it. Um, so in the next couple of videos, I want to show you how you could have solved that with LegalFly and saved yourself a lot of time and money. So the first step, I as a legal professional, I would trade a personal AI associate called Dora to extract from um, the regulations, the key compliance changes that your um, ICT negotiations have to comply with. So in this case, we have uploaded the DORA, uh, the DORA documents that define how you have to be compliant. And now the AI, with the instruction to um, take all the important points out, will go over it. And the important part is, you will see for each of those statements where this information came from to avoid hallucination, to make sure that the data is really based in facts. You can see it here. This point was extracted from that part of the document. Cool, that was the first step. Now we're gonna use that information to create a playbook. A playbook is just a list of a compliance checks you need to do. So in this case, we will create a playbook, compliance checks, and on the right side, you can see, you can define the type. So for example, is it compliant or not? And you can give it extra information, which we have gotten from the AI Dora associate. Now you have a playbook, so a list of compliance checks you can apply to any contract. And that is the third step. So now we're gonna use our playbook to run over a contract. I'm gonna give you one example. So this is a contract which was anonymized. You can see it with the blurry stuff. Um, and we're gonna apply the playbook now. We're gonna select it on the right side, which is our um, Dora playbook. And we're gonna even see like what are the different items and we're going to apply it. So what's going to happen now, the AI will apply it to Luxembourg and it will use all the different compliance items in your playbook to run over the contract and flag to you if your contract is compliant or not. Why is that important? For one contract, it saves you a little bit of time. But now imagine you can apply it to all of your contracts. And that's just the next step. We're going to use the same playbooks, apply it to all of your contracts all of your ICT service agreements and make sure that they are either compliant or if they're not compliant, we create a list of action items for your legal professionals to go over them. So at Group Foyer, for example, we uh, calculated with our mentors, it's going to be roughly 3,000 hours of safe time, roughly 300,000 euros. And that is really just one legal process. You can apply it to any of your processes within your company. And that's where the scalability comes in. It's flexible enough to adjust it and make your legal compliance workflows more efficient one by one. Thank you.
I have to say, I am from Group Foyer, you know, so I'm so happy to discover we could save so much, so many hours. So, so that's that's very impressive. But how long does it take uh, to adapt it to a new to new cases? I mean, uh, because you showed us a very interesting um, case, okay? But how long does it take to really get used to it with, within a company for a team? Mm -hmm. um so that has more or less, let's say, three phases. So the first phase is like setting it up, making sure it integrates with your systems. Um, and there, for example, we have everything on-prem to make sure that you, like, all your contracts are first anonymized. So that's going to take probably a few weeks with your IT to figure out. But once that is all in place and really secure, we have uh, teams that help you going through that change of being able to think as a lawyer from working just on one contract to applying it to logic, like a playbook, and then apply it to all of your contracts. So that, I would say, we normally start in a one-day bootcamp, and then it takes a few, day, a few weeks to get better at it. But we normally support during that process and make sure that like the first playbooks we do together, but I would say the overall change management probably starts with the more, the people that are a little bit better in applying it, like after a few weeks, and then others, I would say tag along because you normally have a like they teach their peers so you're you're using the internal legal knowledge for each company you don't have uh, already some analysis of the dora regulation to be applied um so first of all we're not using any data from like one client to another so the only two things we use is like we have um law firms that are partners and they come uh, supply us, for example, these playbooks, standard ones. But then normally larger companies, they require their own because they have their own guidelines, their own quality standards. And that's when you need to create your own playbooks because then it becomes just more precise because you probably know everything always needs a little bit customization. And that's where we come into play. Yeah, but to analyze external contracts you receive could be useful to have the standard uh... Yeah. Solution. So we actually, um, the AI that we use, it actually is trained with per document type, for example, service agreements, NDAs with up to 5,000 documents per jurisdiction to make sure that basically complies with like the regulation in that country. And together, obviously, with the regulation and, for example, Switzerland, we also supply cases because they also have case law. Are you uh, using a, a specific... Uh uh, LLM or is it uh, uh, an LLM that uh, you, let's say, you use for all customers and that you fine tune based on, uh, on the on compliance references? Very good question. Sadly, I had a perfect slide and threw it out last minute. Um, but we are LLM agnostic. So that means because we use always the LLM that is best for specific use case. Every four or five months, there's a new large language model coming out, OpenAI, Gemini, Google, whatever. And we benchmark them and use them for each use case to, so that you always have the best one. And sometimes for specific use cases, we also have fine-tuned models. But overall, we believe that our technology is more leveraging the best models in the best situation. And that's more a general philosophy where we think we bring the most value. I visited VivaTech this year in Paris, mm -hmm. and there were so many companies applying a similar type solution. What's the magic that makes yours really different? Yeah, so first of all, anonymization. So the one thing we do, we don't just use an LLM and send the contracts there or use local models. So we have a really good model to make sure that none of your own confidential data or your client's data leaves your own uh, premises. Otherwise, we couldn't be using LLMs, specifically in Luxembourg. Um, so that's one USP. The second one, um, we don't see ourselves as just like, oh, like a chat tool. No, we want you to customize it to your specific situation. So what you will see, you will always see like one reviewing tool, one discovery tool, but that's not what we do. We create agents and allow you to then basically leverage them to fix your specific use cases. Um, and that's how we think we can bring you more value because you're quicker in adapting. For example, Dora is just one regulation. Then there comes another. 